In the world of progressive rock, few bassists have left a mark as profound as the man we will talk about today. He was a virtuoso behind a legendary band, and we're going to explore his unparalleled skill, his distinctive tone, and how he forever transformed the bass guitar's role in music. Today, we're diving into the genius of Chris Squire. Are you ready to see why he's considered one of the best bassists in prog rock history? Let's go. Born in London in 1948, Chris Squire's musical journey started with people telling him that they hated his style. Crazy, right? This led him to form Yes in 1968. Yes skyrocketed to success with Squire's innovative bass playing, contributing significantly to their distinct sound that captivated millions. Yes was known for their complex compositions, intricate arrangements, vocal harmonies, and extended song lengths, which were unlike much of the mainstream music of their time. He also sung background vocals while playing these amazing bass lines. Each member of Yes was a virtuoso in their own right. The band featured some of the most talented musicians of the era. The other members included guitarist Steve Howe, keyboardist Rick Wakeman and Tony Kay, drummers Bill Bruford and Alan White, and vocalist John Anderson. Albums like Fragile, Close to the Edge, and the Yes album are considered some of the most legendary of all time. He was the only member of Yes to appear on every album, a testament to his influence and his dedication within the band. Let's break down his impressive playing style. So he was a pick player, but he approached it differently than most. He made contact with the string with his thumb as he played the strings. If you're a guitarist, this could be associated as a pinch harmonic, but it adds tons of rich overtones and harmonics amidst his bass lines. I don't just play with the pick. The pick itself is just, just in front of the thumb. I hit the string with the pick, and then after that, my thumb uh, hits it like a millisecond or two later. So you're getting a harmonic in there as well. So it's kind of a technique that I don't think anyone else has really used. He was able to execute bass lines with incredible precision. All right, you can't say the name Chris Squire without talking about his massive tone. Squire's signature sound, a growling, punchy, gritty tone that cut through Yes's complex arrangements was partly due to his iconic Rickenbacker 4001 bass. He played with extremely low action, which means the strings were really close to the fretboard. This would cause string buzz, which has been a controversial topic amidst bass players with what good tone is, but it was perfect for that Yes sound. He would also pick closer to the the bridge, which would really help with the gritty tone that he's known for. This is arguably one of the most famous bass lines of all time. Check it out. I definitely need to get myself a Rickenbacker. He also had an experimental approach to amplification and effects. He was among the first to champion the use of bi-amping, sending his bass signal to both guitar and bass amplifiers for a richer, more dynamic sound. If you're digging the video, please give it a like and subscribe if you don't already. I appreciate you. Who was his influences? He said that John Entwistle and Jack Bruce were big influences of his. The same influences as Getty Lee from Rush, who also played Rickenbacker at times and was known for his massive tone, another beastly bass player. Squire loved the treble tone Entwistle had and wanted to emulate this. He even used the same roto sound strings. For years, people asked me why I played a Rickenbacker bass. Chris Squire's incredibly original playing to provide the answer. If you're a bassist and you want to get better, check out Bass Freedom below. I should mention that he did play a lot of other basses, but his main one, when you think Chris Squire, you think the Rickenbacker, you know? Another bass line that you need to check out right now. This dude was unreal. All right, we got to check out a little quick snippet of a live track. That tone.
Doesn't feel like he has to dig in too much. But when he does, man. Yes, really jams a lot. Then we're back. Everyone was so good. Seriously, to be able to pull this off live is so freaking hard. As we look back on his illustrious career with Yes and Beyond, we're reminded of his profound impact and his incredible legacy that he left behind for aspiring musicians. Here we are, decades later, and the music of Yes is still echoing down through the years. It makes sense why he influenced so many. Chris Squire passed away in 2015. His style continues to inspire new generations and his presence will live on forever. Thanks so much for watching this video. What a basis we covered today. What an influence of mine. If you want to see another beastly bass player in the rock genre, check out this guy and I will see you guys next time. Peace!